All right, so I am in Salt Lake City with my brother, and he's over here. And uh, our first stop, there he is. Our first stop is gonna be at High West Distillery. Let's go check it out, hey? Hey everyone, we're here at High West Distillery. So my brother and I are going to first have some food and then we're gonna go on the distillery tour. So stay tuned, check out what we're gonna get ourselves into. Here's a copy of their menu. Uh, on the front we have their signature cocktails along with their whiskey offerings. On the inside we have their menu, so you have your starters, your entrees, soups and salads, uh, some dessert even if you're interested in that. And then on the back they have their classic cocktails and their beer and wine offerings. Really a little bit of something for everybody.
I'm at a distillery, had to get a drink. My favorite bourbon drink is an old fashioned. This one is made with bourbon and rye. Looks really nice, I love the glass. You can kind of tell it's, it's very similar to their bottles where it's got like the bubbles on the inside, rounded, give it a try. Oh yeah. You know, I think having bourbon and rye in an old fashioned makes a lot of sense. Uh, you definitely get that rye spice and that bourbon sweetness uh, along with the rest of the ingredients in here. So I give this one an A plus. So for an appetizer, we got the squeaky bee cheese curds and zucchini. Oh, look at that. That looks amazing. All right, so cheese curds, not from Wisconsin. I'm always super leery about. You ever hear the pool test? Let's see if, uh... Yeah. All right, High West Distillery, I see you. Mm. These are like fresh cheese curds. They got a little bit of saltiness to them from the cheese. A real crispy exterior with the batter. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Here's the zucchini. Again, look at the, the breading on there. I'm gonna dip it in the sauce. Mmm. That's a really, really good sauce. I think it goes really well with everything. They gave us a piece of lime, so maybe um, after we get into some of this, we'll throw some lime in there, but yeah, this is a great way to get started. If this is a sign of things to come here at High West, yeah. I'm about it. All right, so I think I'm gonna try some of their um, ready to drink uh, cocktails that they have. So they do have a Manhattan and they have an old fashioned. Uh, this one is the Manhattan. Yeah, that's really good. Like, I can definitely see myself pouring this over ice, sitting on a, uh, sitting out on the porch, just having it, real easy to drink. Maybe on the golf course, help me with my golf swing. Uh, this is the old fashioned. I think I'm an old fashioned guy. So, all right. I think our food is coming up, so we should uh, be checking that out momentarily here. So I got the bison patty melt. This thing looks amazing. Take a look at this. I don't know what's going on here, but... Uh, I'm just pull that off. Now, admittedly, I haven't had much bison. Don't know what to expect. I understand that it's a little bit drier, but uh, it's got the comeback sauce. You would have seen this comeback sauce uh, on the cheese curds and the zucchini uh, appetizer that we had. I thought it was really good, so I'm excited to see it on here. It felt like a mustard-based sauce, but otherwise, uh, should we? Looks huh. up. Uh, pretty basic to be quite frank, so uh, see how it tastes. So the, the bread's crunchy, a lot of flavor on it. The bison is well seasoned. Um, I do think it's maybe a little bit dry because it's a lower fat content uh, meal, but I think the flavors are definitely there. I did not get grilled onions. I'm not a fan of onions at all, so that's probably kind of taken away from some of the flavors that you would normally get on something like this. But I think overall, it's got a really good flavor to it. I'm gonna try another bite here. 
So I got some of the comeback sauce on that bite, a little bit less bread, got the cheese on it. This thing is really, really good. Um, you know, again, you know, one of the things that we kind of talk about a little bit is value. Um, I think this, uh, let me check the menu real quick. Uh, the patty melt is 20 bucks. I don't know if that's standard for this area or here, but um, I think at 20 bucks is a little pricey, uh, but that's my opinion. Again, I'm not sure if that's just the area or not. Now they do have some fries here, some uh, crinkle cut fries. Pretty basic. Um, her waitress did talk about how she loved our fries um, here, but let me, um, yeah, probably could use a little bit more seasoning. Um, they're okay, basic, so. Um, I think overall though, you know, if you're gonna come here for a distillery tour, you're gonna come here and try some drinks you got to get some food um, I'm not sure I would get the bison patty melt again but for what it is and for for what I'm enjoying right now it's definitely gonna hit the spot so we're gonna go check in with my brother I didn't tell you guys this his name is Bubba we love Bubba uh, he actually got himself the burger so we're gonna find out what he thinks um, let's stay tuned I ordered the Refectory burger looked like it was probably going to be like the signature dish um, And it's a blend also of bison and beef Gold Creek barrel ash cheddar whiskey onion jam on a potato bun with rosemary crinkle cut fries First off looks beautiful a Little disappointed this bun looks a little dry. I didn't get any of that awesome sauce that Bill got um, Down here it goes, I don't know I kind of wish I would have got some sauce on there, but whatever. I guess that, that whiskey jam stuff. So, first bite. Well, that's different. I was not expecting that flavor. It must be the bison. I've never had bison before. Now I know what people say when they say it tastes gamey. I think that's what that flavor is. Um, yeah, it's different. Um, not bad. Uh, just a little bit jarring. Um, but the, the bun's good, toasted well. The burger's actually really juicy. I don't think he said it was, his was a little dry. Mine's not dry at all. Um, let me try to get some of this pickles and the jam. Doesn't really add anything. Tastes the pickle a little bit, but that bison flavor is really overpowering everything for me, which is okay. Um, and I agree. Fries. It's crinkle cut fries. Nothing special about them. So yeah, like the burger. Also, it's 20 bucks. I'd recommend it, but just be aware if you don't like that gamey taste, you're not gonna like this burger. All right. So now that I got about halfway through this burger. I can detect more flavors now. Initially, I think I think everything's kind of centered in this burger, and the outside will taste more of the meat. But now I'm getting a lot more of that whiskey onion jam. It brings a nice sweetness to it, and the pickles bring that that um, pickle flavor. <laughs> so, um, actually, I'm enjoying it more now that we've got into a little bit. The only downside is that the bottom of the bun is pretty wet, so um, I gotta hurry to get this thing before it falls apart in my hands but I do think it's a little bit better after I get through a little bit more of it. All right, so we are done with eating. Whew, it was filling for sure. So we're gonna walk this off a little bit and kind of take a little bit of a tour here. You know what, why don't we just take you with us and see what we can find. Our actual tour tour starts uh, 25 minutes, but uh, we have some opportunity to walk around, maybe check out the gift shop. So let's go see what we have going on here. All right, there's a lot of fun history here we have oh, sorry we have the valley tan utah whiskey i've never seen this before this is new for me i'm sure we're going to learn a lot about the history here let's take a look i love the barrel staves at the very top here that is amazing wow so there's a lot of 
little stops that you can make here to read up on the different history and things of that nature. And then they actually have a gift shop here. This is where you can purchase all your goods. Looks like they have some whiskey for sale. So we're gonna take a look around and see if there's anything I wanna buy. Really cool spot. Ooh, boxes. Yeah, it looks like they have a tasting room here too inside the gift shop. So there's a little tasting going on. I know that you don't get anything on the tour itself. The tour is free, but you can come in here. And it looks like I can do a tasting. All right, so we just came outside, take a look around. One of the things I noticed, which, which I thought was really cool, is that these stools, if you take a look, it's like a cork, cork top. So pretty awesome. Oh, well, they have a koi pond here. It's really cool. This is definitely more of an experience, right? You're not coming here just to eat. You're not coming here just for the tour. You're coming here for the entire experience. This is a really kind of a, a nice place. You know, it is out in Park City. It's outside of Salt Lake City. I think it took us 40, 45 minutes to get here from the airport. So, but yeah, this is really, it's just gorgeous out here. This is beautiful country. Look at this view. I mean, how do you not appreciate this view? Wow. Let's go check out what's down here. I see some tracks. If you've been to a distillery, these tracks usually indicate how they move barrels. Sure enough, there they are. So, they must move barrels this way or used to move barrels this way, or maybe it's just for aesthetics because it kind of feels like they go from nowhere to nowhere, but this looks like a loading dock, so you can imagine that this is probably where they do everything. Now we're on the back of the distillery. There's actually, uh, looks like something down that way that we can go take a look at, so let's go see what that is. All right, so we're gonna go check out the event space that they have here. Uh, they do have horseshoes. So if you wanna come out here and play horseshoes, you can. I'm gonna tell you something, I'm not used to the altitude. I'm winded, I'm hot. Whew. This is a little bit of a chore for your boy here. But well, man, this is a beautiful sight. Looking at the distillery from back here, that's gorgeous. I can't wait to actually see the operations. Nice uh, gravel trail. I think they're setting up for an event. I saw some uh, chairs being set up, so I don't want to interrupt too much, but it looks like it's all open. A bunch of guests around here going uh, down the trail taking a look so uh looks like we're on a cliff looks amazing oh man look at this yeah so you can see must be setting up for a wedding or something oh it's windy up here i wonder if it's always this windy up here i would imagine so wow Man, you really just can't beat this view. I can see why people want to move to Utah. Look at that. I wonder if I can zoom in on the freeway there. Look at that. Oh. It is definitely windy up here. All right, I think this is about as far as I'm going. I do not want to interrupt anything. Is that a house? Look at that. Huh. Is that a hotel you said? Yeah, something like here we called it, but it's actually a hotel. Oh yeah, so it's a hotel. Look at this, we're on the other side of this uh, little cul-de-sac venue thingy, majigger, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's go see what else we can get ourselves into. Guys, I, oh, guys, you can also take 
take as many pictures and videos as you would like. So go ahead and take a photo out whatever you guys want to do. But yeah, uh, let's head on up to these stairs and then uh, we'll talk about the building next. Now I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Uh, we did film the entire tour, but I didn't want to bore anyone with the details around it. Now we did have a little bit of a newer tour guide who did very well leading the tour. He had lots of notes and was able to answer everyone's questions like he's been doing it for years. Now like brewery tours, if you've been on a distillery tour, you know that they're very similar in nature. We talk about the distillation process, including what ingredients are used and where they come from. We also talk about the equipment that they used. So here at High West Distilling Company, you will notice that they use what they call a column still and a pot still to do all of their distilling. We did also get a chance to take a look at their packaging room. So here we can see them dumping barrels and being able to run it through the bottling line, get it labeled, get it packaged up and ready for retail. Now one of the things that we didn't really talk about too much was the fermentation process and what that looks like. And we also didn't get a chance to see any of the rick houses where the barrels may be stored. So a couple of things that may have been intriguing to see something that we didn't get a chance to but again if you've seen one you may have seen them all kind of like our educational flight you could say if you're new to high west or just new to whiskey in general it's a great flight because you get our high west bourbon you get our high west double rye so a young rye rendezvous rye which is an older version of double rye it spends a lot more time in the barrel so it gets more floral more of those vanilla caramel tasting notes and then campfire and that's a blend of all three it's a blend of bourbon rye and scotch which some would consider a sin, but we do it. And it is a Highland Scotch, so it's a peated Scotch. So it's smoky, okay. not like a campfire. Um, so you can do that one, that's a great flight if you're new to High West, like I said, those are our core products. Um, if you don't want whiskey for every half ounce pour, we do have the cocktail flight. So that's a double rye, bourbon, and then our barrel aged cocktails. So we have old fashions in Manhattan's that we barrel age and then pour right out the bottle. Super good, sneaky, also strong, 86 proof for those, so pretty nice. Um, if you want the limited releases that we do throughout the year here at High West that are really tricky to find outside of this room, so seasonals, that's our reserve flight. Um, the reserve flight is an awesome flight, some of my favorite whiskeys. My personal favorite here at High West is our high country. So this is the only whiskey that we make here that is 100% from that pot still in that still house, aged down in Salt Lake and then brought back up here. It's made out of 100% malted barley, water, and yeast. It's really light, it's a light whiskey, it's got a great finish. I eat a lot of banana bread, lemon zest, granola, apples, pears, all that good stuff. Um, so this is my favorite. Um, another really good whiskey that we released about a month ago was a barrel select. So this is a 14 year light whiskey. So it's much different than an American straight whiskey. We don't follow the same rules. It comes off the still much higher in proof, about 180 proof. Um, 190 proof is vodka, so it's up there. It does lose a lot of its flavor. It's made out of 99% corn, but then it sits in a bourbon barrel for 14 years. And then we finished it in a brandy barrel for a year and a half. So you get kind of like that bourbon sweetness, but then the brandiness, the berries from the brandy. Armagnac barrel. Um, another one on that, which is also the wild card. So if you want to add this to the one on one or cocktail, you can for nine bucks. This is a Utah only whiskey. It's half bourbon, half rye, half antelope, half jackrabbit for a little jackalope. Um, this is only sold in Utah. I get a lot of citrus and pecan nuts with this one. It's a fantastic whiskey. It's aged longer than anything else that we make here. Um, so you do get a lot of woody characters from the barrel as well. Um, and then Cherry on top is the Midwinter Night's Dram. This is our rendezvous rye finished in French oak port barrels. 
It's almost like a dessert whiskey. You get the rye up front, but then you get the pork on the finish, which is dark cherry, fig, and plum. It's really incredible. This is our most sought after bottle. We released it. This is our ninth year. We release it every October, and we sell out by November. Um, water in the corner, guys, if you want any water. But those are your options. So once you guys know what you like, just let me know, and I can start pouring and get you guys set up with your plans. All right, so we are done at High West. Ha. <laughs> It was a great experience. You know, like I said, we came here, we ate, we walked around, we took the tour, we laughed, we cried. No, we didn't, we didn't do any of that. Um, you may have noticed that, you know, we had some footage of the tasting. We opted to not do the tasting. Personally, I've had them all. He can't tell the difference, so it probably wasn't worth the money. But uh, if you guys happen to be in the area, I would suggest stopping by. At the very least, the experience is really, really cool. And really, how often are you going to be here to do it? So, And Mr. Bill, our, uh, our uh, transport driver, recommends a salmon on Sunday brunch. So you have to come yes. up on Sunday. He says he's got the best wild salmon he's ever had. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Just kind of wrap this up. Um, you actually park, and then they take a shuttle up uh, to where the distillery is. So you can't park up there. So just kind of keep that in mind, but no issues with it. And Mr. Bill, a lot of fun stories. Yeah. So, all right, guys, um, if you have any comments for me, leave them down below. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in.